Hey guys, how you doing? It's Saturday, and normally we'd be doing a live show, but we're both someplace else other than here. We're having our nice two-day weekend, which is something you guys typically have. For you, it's gonna be a three-day weekend. We yeah. hope some of you anyways. We know some of you guys out there like us will be working. Some of you will be working Monday. We won't, we'll be off. But we didn't wanna leave you hanging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try something new. This is something we've been kicking around. And the idea behind this is after we put up a video, in this case, we just put up the, today we have a Toyota Tundra radio speakers and steering wheel control to do. Cause we don't have a lot of time to go back through the comments. Correct. So today we're gonna take this video and we're gonna answer all the comments. So this is a video about a video where we're answering the comments. Sound like fun? Sounds, sounds fun. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. So we're trying some new shows lately. As you know, we tried one and didn't work out. Now we're gonna go ahead and try this one. And we felt like this would be a great time to insert it because we're not here. We'll go ahead and throw this beta show up, see if it's something you guys are interested in. There again, we know you guys love the shows we put out. We're just looking to expand upon those shows so that things don't get old and boring because, you know, no one likes that. All right, so first question up we have, hello, great show. Hitting the subscribe button as brutal as a man can hit it. I'm looking for a steering wheel control interface module for my O2 Tundra with a AVHX 8600 BT. Wondering why the SWIRC and not the CP2. And while we are at it, also why not the SW ADS MSW, which is the maestro piece. Keep up the great work. Greetings from the Netherlands. So what are your thoughts? Well, for me, definitely the CP2 does yeah. That's the way to go. And I have to agree with you on that. The CP2 is my preferred steering wheel control interface. It's way easier to program. It's much nicer to use. The reason why we didn't use it in this particular case is because we don't get the opportunity to actually sell the stuff. That's Paul's job. And in some cases, he just doesn't sell those for whatever reason, and we don't get to question it. Now, the other one you mentioned is the iDatalink piece. That's a really nice one as well. The only difference between, like, let's say that and a CP2 is that you have to program it on the laptop or computer before you get to put it into the car, which is an extra step. Whereas the CP2, you just go to your phone, you get all your information, you flick the dip switches, and you're done. Multifunctions. Yeah, so if it were us, we'd go CP2 all day long. Yeah. First, love the show, learning many things from watching you guys. Second, what size is that foam weather stripping you use surrounding the door speakers to the door panels? I need to try that and see if it helps. This is one of the reasons why we came up with DNF Tool Drawer com well so that we could put up things like that there for you to easily find them mm -hmm. It's a 32nd of an inch thick foam that we buy from Amazon. So we have a link to it there. The reason why we went with 32nd of an inch is because some speaker manufacturers, the baskets are kind of flimsy. Mm -hmm. And when we had eighth inch, they would twist. And that sucks. So we use that. Pack steering wheel controls suck. Metro access for the win. Now the reason why I'm reading this question as opposed to just skipping over it is simple. You go with what you know. Yeah. So for example, I know pack steering wheel controls inside and out. I know don't know access. We put them in when we need to, but they're no fun for us. And yeah. every time I have to put one in, what do we end up doing? Spending hours on the phone with their tech support. Right. And so, like he said, in the end of the day, use what you actually are comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Yes. If you like access, use access. We like pack, we'll use pack. Right. And if you like iData, use theirs as well. Yeah. They're all going to get you to the same place, which yeah. is the ability to control your steering wheel. John Doe said, just subscribed. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. As always, excellent video. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We'll try. Why do you glue the clips and not the radio plates? Well, that's simple. The clips fall off, the plates <laughs> lock in place. So when you snap those plates in, very rarely do they ever break off. Actually, the only time we have them break off is if someone punches the radio in the dash. Correct, yeah. That's why we don't glue them. Yeah. We don't need to. If I owned a shop, a USB adapter would be free accessory option. Well, and you'd be out of business soon. <laughs> At the end of the day, these things are not free. They cost money. They can be really expensive depending on which one it is. Some of these cost 10 bucks. Some of them cost 25 to 30 bucks. So yeah. giving them away free, well, let's be honest. It's just not a viable option to keep the doors open. You have right. to pay to keep these lights on. You have to charge. You can give a good deal, yeah. but not free, definitely. Yeah, you can't give stuff away free. <laughs> as much as you want to, you just can't do it. You right. know, you have to pay the bills. When can we get an unboxing and review of the Kenwood 9905? I want to see it 
it. I want to see if it is right for my 14 RAM. That is a great question. And to answer that, it's gonna be in the next couple weeks. The yes. reason why is the 4400 Pioneers come out. So the 9905 has to come out so we can put the 4400 in so I can play with that one. Stay Wait. tuned. <laughs> why do the owners stand there breathing on your neck while you working? Now for the most part, the owners don't stand behind us all the time. A lot of the times we actually have questions for them and we'll have them come into the install bay so we can make sure we're doing something the way they want it. Sometimes they hang out for a little bit, but most of the time they sit up front and there's a chair and they can look in the window. Actually, these chairs right here, we position them so if they want to watch us, they can. Sometimes they're in the install bay, but for the most part, yeah, we keep them up front. It's just when they make it into that cut of the video, it's just, you know, it's what it is. But at the end of the day, it is their car. Of course. And we want them to feel comfortable. They are paying us to work on it, so yeah. It's... And if they want to see what is going on, I mean. A lot of the times, are. you know, we'll get the question, hey, when you get the dash out, can I take a look? Because they want to see that. They're curious about it. And it's like, yeah, sure, no problem. Hi, I just watched a video about the speakers that are held in with Revit. My question is, will you do if you have factory Toyota speakers, but you need to to put speaker mounts in for aftermarket speakers. How will I install, I don't want to use rivets, but don't have the rivet tool. To answer that, we understand not everyone has the cool riveting tool that we have, so when we drill those rivets to take those speakers out, now you have to put new ones in. Well, you can rivet the new ones in. You can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up an inexpensive riveter and rivet them back in. If you don't want to do that, then obviously the cheapest option would be to pick up some self-tapping screws and drill new screws in. The manufacturers typically screw their speakers into the the doors. We're just taking it to the extreme, I should say, by doing it the way we do it. We feel like that is the best way for us to do it. As a shop. As a shop. Yes. You know, you yourself as an individual, if the manufacturer screws the speaker into the door like most of them do, there's no reason why you can't do the same thing. Pick up some self-tapping screws, turn the speaker a quarter of an inch, drill new screw holes. Hey guys, you guys make it work really easy. Keep it up. Thank you, Juan. It doesn't feel that way, <laughs> but okay. Did they have the JBL option for from the factory? In this particular vehicle, they did not have the JBL system. It was just a base model. Ah, oh, no speaker install parts to finish demo. I'll let it pass this time. Unfortunately in this one, by the time we were done with everything, it was, this This was actually the second part of a day. The video was running long, so I split them into two separate videos. We had to hurry up and get this one done and get it out, as you see at the end of the video, and I was like, we didn't even tell everyone it was done, because, yeah, so, sometimes that happens. Awesome as always, Dean Fernando. Just hoping your bolts don't get knocked out tonight by the caps. Well, me too, and by the time you're seeing this video, we'll have either made it on into the Stanley Cup or playoffs, or we'll be sitting at home sitting at watching home someone else play. Crying. <laughs> yeah. What harness and kit do I need for a Honda Accord 2006? No steering wheel controls, no amp. Specifically, I don't know, but the easiest way to find out is there's two websites, pack-audio.com yeah. and metraonline.com. Both of those are where we go to find what kits we need to do the install. Great. What are your recommendations for Android OS car stereos? I really don't have any. We don't deal with them. No. So far, we haven't had any luck with them. We just do car stereos that, you know, like Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, stuff like that. Yes. You know, that we know is going to work and sound good. Hey guys, that stock radio looks a lot like a Toyota Corolla, at least the shape. Am I right? Yeah, they do look very similar. I believe the Corolla radio is probably a nicer radio than what comes in that truck. <laughs> Props to the owner for having a expensive, reliable, and good working cell phone holder. <laughs> I don't know what this means. Uh, I own six of them and they are amazing. I'm assuming there was some kind of cell holder, holder on the dash. I, I have no idea. Oh, wow. But you go. awesome. Six of them. Wow. My gosh, that's a ton <laughs> of work for those pack modules. You should look into the ASWC ones. I've been loving them and a lot easier to program. Now, here's the thing. This is, this is a very very similar to the comment that was earlier. When it comes to wiring in the module, the wiring is the same no matter whose interface you use. In this case, it's a Toyota. It's a three wire installation. If you want to, like we showed you with the paperwork that they come with and how to install it. If you wanted to, you could easily go to pack-audio.com and go to the SWRC tab. And there you can actually get specific instructions for your car, meaning it skips all that turning pages and paperwork. I just wanted to show it in that if you were doing it on the 
the bench from your house and you didn't want to go to your laptop, it's actually really simple. And as far as programming it goes, I mean, at the end of the day, you're programming exactly the same way you program your cable remote. You push a button, you push a button. You push a button, you push a button. That way, every button is exactly what you want it to be. There's no guessing. You know, when you're using the Metro module, you're just pressing the thing and it, it auto programs in whatever sequence they thought it needed to be in. But you still have to push buttons. If it's not the button you want, then you gotta go through the process of trying to remove it. <clears throat> With the pack module, it really doesn't care. If you want volume up to be volume down and you want track up to answer the phone, you just program it that way. Hit the button, hit the button. It's that simple. There again, it's what we do, it's what we're used to. Work with what you know. Hey Dean and Fernando, honestly it does not bother you out with people who Hawkeye you, lol, standing around like vultures. Now in this case, in this video, there was a scene where Fernando was putting some speakers in the door and there was a couple standing behind him. They weren't actually the owners of the vehicle. They were fans of the show that were traveling through town and wanted to meet us. Paul brought them over to introduce them to us. We spent a couple minutes talking with them while we were working on the car. Normally we try to stop working on the car and give, you know, if we have time. Time, but time. If this was yeah. the end of the day. We really didn't have the time to do that. So we enter we we entertain them while we worked on the car. Correct. Sometimes we have time to stop what we're doing and talk with you and you know and 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 shoot the shit as it were. Sometimes we don't. I hope you weren't <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> I hope those weren't the customers. It's very annoying when you have someone standing next to you doing absolutely nothing other than staring at you while you're working. I agree. Yeah. It is kind of annoying. And, and there again, this is a common theme we're hearing a lot of. But at the end of the day, people want to see what we're doing. I've been doing this a really long time. It really doesn't bother me that much anymore. I mean, we're not and hiding not, it. Yeah, but it normally, like, it doesn't happen. Like, yeah, a lot, you know, yeah. like few, few In this times, case, yeah. these last couple videos we've had, we've had people in the videos <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it's like, right? on a normal day, like today, there was no one that came in. Nobody. It was just him and I talking about the rain that happened yeah, last exactly. night. It's kind of boring. So every now and then, getting to talk to somebody new is kind of nice. Yes. You know, it adds a little bit of fun to it. Just like, you know, Doug. The stories, yeah. You know, those were great conversations. Hey Dean, you guys ever thought about keeping under seat amp rack templates in certain vehicles to sell those who don't have access to routers and other cutting tools? Yeah, we think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that usually we're building one-offs. We just haven't had the, the forethought or the time to make, to expand upon that. Is it right. something we might do in the future? Oh, yeah. most definitely. We really, you know, think thinking about how to move the show forward and of course pay for the show because it's expensive making this show. Things like that might actually be something we look into. Awesome video. Well, thank, thank you. you. Do you sell the Tacoma tweeter adapters? I need a set. <laughs> there again, we understand yeah. and we'd love to sell those things. Right now though, it's, you know, the problem with Toyotas is that there's six or eight different actual Toyota mounts for the tweeters and the dash. And we don't know which ones are which. We should probably catalog those, yeah. but we haven't been. That's something we want to work on. And there again, as we move forward, we probably will start to sell things like that. The ugliest interior ever. <laughs> Great job as always. <laughs> Thanks. Toy Toy Toyota's what it is, man. You yeah. either love it or you hate it. What percentage of customers like to watch you work on their cars? If they're bringing the car here and they know we have YouTube, they all, first question they ask us is, did you film my car? And yeah. I say yes. My car is gonna be in YouTube? And then they yeah. say, when can I watch it? And I say, <laughs> six to eight months. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. yeah. For the USB and aux inputs, use the Access USB 3.5 EXT. It fits perfectly in the Toyotas in the original opening. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, at the time when we filmed this, we didn't have access to that product, meaning we just hadn't ordered one yet. Yeah. So going forward, it is a product that we are going to actively stock. And thank you for sharing that information with us and you guys. Thank you. How do you set the base knob on a Pioneer GMD 9601 using the SMD DD1? If you read the instructions, he says turn the bass knob to about where you want it when you're setting the amplifier. At the end of the day, about halfway up to three quarters up would probably be where you want to set it. It is the bass boost for the amplifier, so along with volume it does add boost. So you want to make sure that you add as much distortion into the amplifier as possible when setting it so that you don't blow up your equipment. Personally, I would turn it all the way up. I'm a worst case scenario kind of guy, but then again I understand the need for some headroom. Three quarters. Yeah. Good work like always. There again, thank you. 
Woohoo, you're back. <laughs> Where were we, Clint? <laughs> it's only been a day. I know, right? All right, guys, so this is the first of this. Uh, there again. Let us know if it's something you guys are interested in, us going back and reading the questions on the video. <laughs> if you guys like this, we'll do more of them. Let there again, we understand you don't want us to take places of the shows, but at the end of the day, we want to expand the content and get new things out there for you guys to watch. As much as you guys love installed irons and unboxings and all that, it's nice to have something else to watch. All right, guys, as always, have a nice weekend, be safe, See you later. We'll see you Tuesday. Yeah. Not really. You'll see a show, but it'll be on Tuesday. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend.